Hello? <laughs> Oh, good, after, <laughs> good afternoon. We're all cheerful here and we're, we're meeting again, this wellness uh, gathering and getting the happy on. And it's through the core, the core principles of core, the principles of core alignment. Lynn is going to facilitate. Take it away, Lenny. Right. <laughs> all right. Well, here we are for our we're going to be looking at what it means to stand in happiness. And so we're going to start with the question. The question for today is, when you look to the right of you, what is the first thing you see? So my name is Lynn. <laughs> and when I turn to the right of me, the first thing I see is, um, well, I see the chair of my treatment room where clients usually put their belongings. And I also see the pictures that I have on the wall that, um, well, they're just pictures that I resonate with that I've collected over time that make me feel good. <laughs> Madeline? I'm Madeline. I'm in Calgary, Alberta. And when I look to the right, um, I see uh, the window on the far right. I see a cool hanging thing that... Chief Seattle said in uh, 1854, I see a stack of books that are random. <laughs> Either I'm reading them or I'm uh, wanting to read them or I'm, I've got them just for uh, reference and then office stuff. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. Lorraine? Okay, when I look to the right, I see a printer and my shelf of books. How about you, all? When I look to my right, I see a window and about a dozen plants. <laughs> nice. Well, well, I forgot to say oh, that where I'm, I'm from. To say from, where I am. I, yeah. I, I'm from British all Columbia. Of them and I'm, <laughs> it's the rain is that too. I'm all of them and I'm in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Awesome. Yes. And, you know, there's a reason why we say our name, say where we are and, and and answer the question. But one of the reasons is that it helps us. It it actually is part of our neuro-linguistic capacity to recognize um, people and names and who they are. It actually helps us build our capacity to remember. Hey, <laughs> so... That is one reason. It's nice. It's like an introduction. It's like, where am I? I'm right here. I'm in Calgary. And, uh, my name is Lynn. So, so what we're going to be doing is um, looking at the concept of what it means to really stand in happiness. And we're, our intention for today is to associate into the position of happiness by standing in that state and re recognizing the difference that this can make for us and in our lives. And the intention is to really gain awareness around happiness and what it means and the difference that happiness can make for us as we continue this conversation about happiness and what it means. So, so let's just look at a time. When was a time in your life where you recognized being happy? And I'll go first. Um, a time in my life that I recognize being happy. Well, you know what? Today, I don't know what it was about today, but I have felt very light today. And I would say, like, no worries. Like, it's just, I've had a great day with clients. And um, I just generally feel happy. How about you, Madeline? I'm... Uh also feeling really light with the day so I concur we Gordon I went for a walk he didn't have to work today he and I went for a walk around the pond and we were joking and you know just having 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 fun so it was a lightness that was happy yeah cool so just today <laughs> nice <laughs> When was a time <laughs> in your life when you recognized being happy? 
Was that aimed at me? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I, mm -hmm. I missed the I missed the first part of that. <laughs> um, a time in particular when I was feeling happy. I think the first time I think the first time I went to Florida, I just was. Uh, I think I was struck by the difference in temperature and humidity. It was a it made me very happy. Mm. Got it. How about you, Lorraine? I think the thing that came to my mind right away is when I was hitchhiking through Europe and we were hitchhiking through Austria and we came across that we were in this little village called Wolfgang Z and we it was just there was a feeling we went to went to a, a the pub as we always did. And with, there was they're playing playing real nice jazzy type of music, and uh, Mary and and we you know we had the the beer and things like that. But there was just a group of nice people, and it, the 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 atmosphere and the, the environment and the the people in Austria are just just bubbly. And I really just I can still feel the the feel how happy I was there. In fact, I recorded it because I don't you know in my journal that I, it was just very contented feeling so that that yeah. pops up in my mind right away <laughs> cool that's really cool yeah yeah well what 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 do you guys think it means um well what does it mean to you to be happy lorraine you're on my screen big so <laughs> <laughs> what well, i think uh what it means to me is is it's um it lowers the blood pressure for sure, <laughs> and it's it's just a good good warm feeling. It's contenting, and it's uh, it's it's you know it just relieves the tension if you have any, and it's just to me it's a good state of being. Mm. Got it. Got it. Mm. How about you, Olive? What does it mean to you to be happy? Uh, I think it just means a, a lightness in spirit and. Uh, to be without worries or concerns. Mm -hmm. How about you, Madeline? Um, I think it is knowing, um, knowing that there is a moment of okay, everything's okay. I think that's that's the happy, you know, it, it's a happy thing to not feel like uh like there's gloom and doom right so to bring that out from from myself i think is because you know it's pretty easy to get drawn into the gloom and doom and and uh and so i don't know it's a it's a, a little spark of everything's good everything will be okay yeah a spark of a moment of okay <laughs> a moment of okay yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well what it means to me <laughs> to be happy hmm. yeah it it's usually for me it's a feeling in my body like I it's it's a it's a sense of lightness and um curiosity and 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 not excitement but um like engagement like sort of a willingness to keep like to just like a soft exploration. That's, that's <laughs> what it means to me. <laughs> so what do you think happiness means to other people? Madeline? Well, you know, I have this perspective that people need to buy things to be happy or they need to change their location. They need a new place. They need a new house. I think I think external is where most people go for happiness and uh and well that's what I see anyway. That's that's what I think I see. Got it. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Olive? What do you think it means? To uh, uh, what makes other people happy? I was just thinking of my my grandma. Um new babies made her happy. Uh, she had eight kids of her own and said that she'd have had more if she hadn't just got too old. 
<laughs> and so she was she was always really excited to welcome a new baby into the and it might be new baby kittens, new baby puppies. I think um, a lot of people are just excited and happy when there's new life. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. How about you, Lorraine? What do you think happiness means to other people? Well, I I think that it, it must mean it probably means the same as it means to us. Uh, but how they find the happiness is maybe a different thing. Uh, they don't maybe sit around and talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, and this is the thing. How many times do you really sit with somebody in how many times do I in my life sit around the table and talk about what happiness means and <laughs> or, or what anything, you know, what like but they are it is interesting conversations because it's like i think what happiness means to other people is often something that is just happening to them they're not necessarily going out and contemplating it or you know they're just taking it when it comes or creating it in a certain way so well, let's just look at this. So what was a time when you experienced happiness? Let's just share another time where you noticed being in a state of happiness. Lorraine? Another time that I've been in a state of being happy. Well, I think I'm, I think just as you say, today is, is happy. Uh, I think it's it gives you, you know, a state of confidence when you're in confidence and you have gratitude for things that makes you in a state that makes me in a state of of happiness and what did you notice about today that made you feel happy <laughs> well i was on a learning curve on things and i that that made me happy that things are changing in the world for the the good <laughs> <laughs> nice. how about you madeline um, well, I'm going to reflect back because some of some of the conversation is about reflecting back as well as the present. So I'm going to say when we when we collective Gord and and my family and I um, decided that we would throw a party and surprise everybody, we ended up getting married. So it was a very fun time because it was a surprise to people, but it was also a really fun party. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. You know, I think it is easier to, to recall times when I wasn't happy. Um, I'm happy most of the time. So, ha uh, Happy is the norm for me. I'll try and think of a time in particular when I was very happy. Um, I think I'm happy surrounded by family. And we took a family trip with our adult children to Nanaimo. And uh, we were we rented a big house. Everybody had their own space and they were able to we were able to explore the area and just enjoy each other's company. So that's what came to mind. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Well, a time that I rem recognized being happy when I experienced, I, um, well, just last night we were with family and we were playing a game and we have this new game called dog house. And it is, it, it's got every emotion in it and it's really fun. And so we were playing with, um, with Lars and Janice, which are Carrie's niece and nephew in law. And um, anyways, I I just like playing games. I mean, I really feel happy <laughs> when we're playing games because it's light and everybody's engaged and there's something to do. It's not just sitting around <laughs> doing. And so, um, but this particular game, I, I find it challenging because everybody gets can get really emotional at different times, and it's it's um, it's it's just really um, fun to feel into a game but have still feelings going and lots of laughter and mm -hmm. uh, yes so <laughs> what do you guys remember most about choosing happiness 
Adeline? Remember most about choosing happiness. Um, remember most, I think, is my um, desire to look at the positive side of things. The, my, my, my first feeling on things usually is a quite a positive spin. If somebody is like looking at it the, from the other way, I go, yeah, but, yeah, like maybe there's a positive side to it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so flipping, flipping stuff, I think is what I think about. <laughs> um, the thing that comes to mind is during COVID days when I was looking for things to do, my son suggested that I take an online Harvard course, was free, and it was called uh, the, the Science of Happiness. And it was, it was quite fascinating. It was, uh, anybody could participate in it, but the, the actual course being taught was to people in their 20s. And um, I found it interesting that that group, age group of people almost needed to be taught how to be happy. Mm -hmm. uh, they they were very they started out very negative. So you know, after uh, it was a, I think it was about a six week course, and at the end of it, um, we'd come up with strategies to be happy. So. Yeah, that was four years ago. I've since decided to embrace happiness. <laughs> How about you, Lorraine? What do you remember most about time? Of well, it's funny when you said I, cho I chose to be happy. I don't think I was you're, you're really conscious of choosing to be happy. It's it's part of my vocabulary now uh, to choose things. But mm -hmm. the word choose, it's just something that happens. Something that strikes a funny ball bone or see something. I mean, we've you know I've gone into you know these laughters that you got pains in the side because <laughs> all of a sudden I guess that is a an environment of happiness because you just laugh for for the sake of do you see something funny in it? But that course that you were talking about, Oliver, that sounds very interesting. Yeah, was well, yeah, fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Well, and this is the thing is we can choose happiness just like we choose any other state. You know, it, it so what so when you think of times of not choosing happiness or not being happy, what do you remember most about those times? Madeline, you look like you're in the dark all of a sudden. Oh, the sun just kind of went <laughs> down a little bit and I don't have a light on. Um <laughs> it just kind of got dark in that <laughs> unhappiness mode <laughs> a dark time <laughs> well I I would say that like you know there it could be an imbalance to be feeling down and um like no ability to pull yourself up right so I, you know, it makes me think that it's not always, it's, it can be sort of not just a mental thing. It can be a chemical thing too. So, um, so where's mm -hmm. the balance, you know, in, in sometimes yeah. um, now, if I was to think of a time, um, you know, we just lost our dog. So like, that was a very unhappy moment, like to have to put a dog who was sick down, like that's, you know, but it had to be done. You know, there's moments where you just go, well, you have to do it, right? You have to face the facts. So I don't know. Those are my thoughts. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I know it's it's true. It's like that balance, right? And and it's sometimes it's an imbalance of something, right? It's more than just what what I might be choosing or not choosing. Yeah. What about you, Lorraine? A time that I wasn't happy. Or, well, I could, well, what do you remember most about times of not choosing happiness? Oh, <laughs> but, well, th there was one time that just not too long ago that I was fighting with my um, sewing machine. 
and <laughs> and a lot of anger came out of me. I sit and laugh at it now because it was so funny. <laughs> but I did wasn't I wasn't choosing to be happy with my sewing machine at the time. The thread kept breaking, <laughs> and I was sewing something that I wasn't really falling into place. And so uh, that I can still see myself being that choice of being very mad. But I can sit and laugh at it now because it was really so funny. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, it is. It's you know I can think of like just this past Saturday. I, I mean, there was part of me that felt kind of felt happy, but also felt because I went to a celebration of life that was really quite moving and and there was this sense of happiness because I was seeing people I hadn't seen since I was a teenager oh. so there was this mixed feeling of I'm really happy to be here but this is not the circumstances that I would really have preferred to have that experience you know mm -hmm. um so I mean it, it's interesting to just look at I, I chose not to choose happiness in that moment because it just didn't seem appropriate, right? Like mm -hmm. there was sort of a reverence going on and 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 there was happiness there, even from, um, you know, my friend who lost his partner, you know, like he was very happy, but there, it was everything, you know, he was happy and it was sad all at the same time. Mm -hmm. and And so... It's just interesting to notice what it is like to, you know, recognize happiness, recognize sadness or anger or whatever the emotion is. Mm -hmm. So if we were to stand in a state of happiness where there is happiness here, what is different? Olive? Um. Well, I, I think yesterday I could have chosen to be very unhappy. I would, I've always been a big fan of Chris Christopherson and he, he passed away on Saturday and um, his music can be very dark. And when I was a teenager, if I needed a good cry, that was my go-to music. I'd get out my Chris Christopherson albums and I would just <laughs> wallow in whatever was making me sad that day. <laughs> And yesterday I, thought I chose, he was 88 years old. He'd lived a good life. He has, he had eight kids, he had three wives. Um, so I chose to, to focus on the positive and uh, um, appreciate the, the music, the movies, uh, appreciate the good that he had brought into my life and the lives of particularly women. Women really like Chris Christopherson. <laughs> that was that was my time choosing happiness over sadness. Mm. How about you, Madeline? Um, well, focusing on it is makes it almost harder to find the happiness because because it's 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 on demand as it were as opposed to because mm -hmm. i operate very strongly in feelings so to feel happy i you know i don't want anybody to tell me that i need to be happy because that makes me That's not dumb. happy <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's a slippery slope it's a it's a weird <laughs> balance, thing yeah and and the balance of it exactly mm -hmm. so it becomes and Lorraine and Lynn, because we have read together, I cry at really happy things, like <laughs> really emotionally wonderful things makes me cry. So it's like this weird thing that I am happy. I'm happy I'm hearing and reading, but you know, it I burst into tears. So it's 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 a very interesting emotional thing because happiness isn't always laughing to me because I have witnessed myself be in tears but I'm happy <laughs> I'm touched so yeah complications right um, <laughs> whatever that means <laughs> yeah <How would> <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. Lorraine? Okay. I uh, what it the question was what what we find happiness now or well not now, you know. Okay, I'm I'm just I'm was just aware because we're doing the series on happiness. The little sayings that I found, I sent you one, Lynn, yeah. today. Mm -hmm. uh, and I Randall happened to find one and he sent it and the, the quote was happiness is not something you postpone for the future, it's something that you design for the present. Mm -hmm. So good advice. So so I uh, you know you're very aware of happy statements. So and, of course, the one I sent to Lynn was the, the, the fact that the happiness is when you realize that your kids have turned out to be the wonderful, turned out to be wonderful, amazing people. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Nice. Well, you know, our intention for today is to stand in the state of happiness and have awareness about what happiness means and the difference that this can make in our lives. So it's it's very broad. It's you know, happiness isn't always just laughing and fun. It, it can be just being deeply moved, but mm -hmm. yeah. Right? So, mm -hmm. but what will you take with you from this conversation until we talk again, Olive? I will take from this conversation that happiness has many different expressions. There's many ways to be happy. Mm. And to recognize those different ways of being happy. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Madeline? What I will take away that will support me until we talk again, um, I think the awareness that um, talking about everything that we have talked about is is really enlightening and happy and light and bubbly. And, you know, just to discuss it is is gives me a feeling of happiness so that's what i will take away <laughs> what i'll take away from, from this conversation till we meet again i think that what you what's being said is if there is all sorts of degrees of happiness and motions of happiness and you know so i think that's to recognize that Happiness is smiling all the time and <laughs> laughing. It's, it's to recognize those emotional periods that uh, you can laugh at now, if, if, you know, or just appreciate them. So, yeah. Well, what I take away is how much there is to discover around what it actually is and what it means, <laughs> and how it feels, and whether I'm choosing it or not choosing it, or. Um, you know, all the situations that come up and, and the undercurrent of it and, and how it might show up because it might not show up the way I think. And the confusion around mm -hmm. it, balance, you know, it's like, okay, maybe this mm -hmm. is just happiness in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be with you. That'll support you for the rest of your life. Madeline? what I will take with me that will support me for the rest of my life um, to to be conscious of finding the happy <laughs> to get your happy on yeah. is, uh, <laughs> is, a, is a really valuable uh, valuable uh, place to be to pursue it as it were yeah, yeah. Lorraine <clears throat> what I'll take away for to support me the rest of life Ah, just be happy. Happiness <laughs> is. you <laughs> all. I will take to support me for the rest of my life. Um, the idea of finding happiness in everyday situations, um, seeking out happiness. So mm. That's what I'll take. Awesome. Yes, what I'll take with me that will support me for the rest of my life. Mm. Well, that there is happiness in every moment. And even if I'm not seeing it or feeling it, that it's likely a happy moment. <laughs> <laughs> so it's amazing what we can do in a half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Kate Michaels would be very proud. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Lynn. And I'm going to stop.